Happy Friday, guys. <laughs> I just got a text message. Um, so, go ahead and get your fire and grab your tea. Get ready for this transmutation, this meditation we're getting ready to do. Um, also, I do have ascension symptoms. So if I sneeze or snot starts coming or you guys see rashes and stuff just pop up, we just gonna roll with it. Okay, I don't have any tissue. So I might just use my sweater. <laughs> oh no. I've been having these symptoms for the past week. I've been working with an ascended master and um, he's really good at getting things out. And so we're getting it out. We're clearing. And speaking of clearing, I guess that's what this video is about. I was watching the internet yesterday and watching IGTV, and I just saw some real disturbing stuff, man. I was disturbed. And I don't want to judge anybody. And so I won't say what I saw, because if I say it, I think everybody would be like, uh, you know, let me go to this person's page. But I just saw some real disturbing stuff. And not only that, I was having a conversation with the Omi and I was Yoni steaming as I was talking to him. We we're talking about business and stuff like that. And so I, you know, I posed the question to him, you know, like, do how do you, when do you Yoni steam? I don't know what you call it for men, pea steam, prostate steam. I don't know. And he said that he, he doesn't. Well, let me back up. The video that I saw that disturbed me was related to feminine sexual health. And some things that women were doing that I'm like, wait, what are we doing? <laughs> like, is this what we're doing out here, ladies? Divine feminine? So, this is why I'm making this video. First, let's start with the, just, let's just start with health, period. Health is a moment to moment thing. You could be healthy as you want to be at 5 a.m. And at 5 p.m., you can drop dead from a heart attack, an aneurysm, anything. That's health. No matter if you're vegan, if you eat meat, if you are breatharian. That's just how the body works, okay? You never know. When is your time because, you know, of health stuff? And because it's a moment-by-moment moment thing, each moment we have an opportunity to eradicate things from my body in very creative ways, right? Now, some diseases, especially viral diseases, those diseases are harder to get rid of than just say like, um, I don't know, bacteria. You know, I'll say, I'll say bacteria infections are a little easier to get out of the body versus fungal and viral. So let's get in this. Some of y'all are nasty. And I'm gonna just say it. Some, some, some of us are doing some very, um, perverted things knowing that we have these viral infections and we're spreading these infections and making it a normal thing and making it common because so many people have it. And instead of taking a time, taking a year, year and a half, and really just eradicating your body, getting rid of the things that hold viruses, we continue to spread it which is, is, is absurd to me. Um, the thing about a virus, especially those sexual viruses, they're coated in a protein. And that protein gives it a hard shell, almost like a beetle, right? So basically you got beetles crawling around in your body. Um, and in order to penetrate that, that hard casing, you have to alkaline the body, which is on the other side of acidic, right? So acidic is, is it a burn, it hosts diseases, it hosts viruses, it hosts funguses, but on the other end, it's also 
a fire that will kill parasites, that will kill funguses, but you have to be high in alkaline. Most viruses like to penetrate the body, penetrate the immune system, the cells, and then they like to bury themselves. So you could legit contract a virus, a sexual virus at the age of 17, but it not express itself until the age of 25 when your immune system is compromised, right? So, The way to even stop a virus before it comes is to check the mind. Because this is the thing, you can fast, you could do vegan, you could take all of the oils, you could take all of the herbs, but the virus will persist until you get rid of the mental virus that attracted it. It's a mental and an emotional virus. When we're thinking about a virus that's like genital herpes, that comes from guilt and shame. You attract that virus from repetitive thoughts of guilt and shame. And nine times out of 10, it's a religious or family thing. Religious or family psychology, let me not say thing. And so although you may be acting and engaging in sexual behaviors, you still have this underlying guilt, like, oh man, I shouldn't be doing this. I know this is wrong. Da, 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 da. And so until the mind processes the guilt and get rid of the guilt completely from whenever it started, two years old, three years old, whenever you got taught that whatever sexual behavior is wrong and you started forming guilt when you your body began to be sexual, until you go back to that very moment, and sometimes it's ancestral, you have to go back centuries, until you get rid of that, that virus is gonna stay in the body no matter what herbs you take. So it's a spirit, soul, and body thing. It's holistic. And yeah, it is curable. I saw on the video somebody was like, well, you can't cure it and da 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 da. And that's why yoni steaming is so important because yoni steaming, number one, it's lubricating the walls, it's lubricating the, the pelvic area, it's steaming things out, things that are buried in there that wouldn't come out with just a cup of tea. That steaming is unclogging. Ain't nothing staying in there with a good steam, a consistent steam. Yoni steaming is able to get to the cellular level and pull out trauma that's encoded in your DNA. Disease that is encoded in your DNA. Psychologies that are encoded in your DNA. And let me say this. Sometimes when a disease is buried so deep, we don't know it's there because we don't have outbreak or whatever the case may be. But your personality will show the disease, the personality, the anger, the frustration, or the cravings, or the, the pervertedness, the addictions, show that it's no longer you. The virus has taken over. You just call it your personality. You say, well, that's just who I am. That's just who I am. No, it's the virus controlling you. And that brings me to men and steaming the prostate. So, <laughs> I hate that uh, I don't have a lot of time. If I run out of time, this will go to YouTube. So, one thing, when I'm dating somebody, like I'm not the, I'm not the take me out to dinner type of girl. I'm not take me to the movies type of woman. That's just not me, Who that's not who I am. I wanna know what deposits you're putting into yourself. I want to know what are your healthcare regimens? What are you doing spirit, soul, and body? I want to go to the places that you go to feed yourself. I want to see that. I want to know that the masculine is doing something outside of the gym to make himself whole. And oftentimes men don't. And peep it. So after I had the one conversation with the homie about, you know, the prostate steaming, I started asking other men, I'm like, do y'all, you know, 
you, you steam your prostate? <laughs> no one does. <laughs> I didn't meet one man that steamed his prostate. And when I brought it up, it was looked at as being feminine or something that made him homosexual. I scratched my head because I thought, well, I thought having sex with a man made you homosexual. I didn't think nurturing your body <laughs> makes you homosexual. And so understanding that, men, you guys store a lot of your emotional and psychological stuff in your prostate. And if your only outlet is the gym, and most often in the gym, you're going to pain. Most often in the gym, you're going to beat your body up, which means that you're just trading one pain for the other. You're not releasing, you're still burying. And when you bury that emotion, number one, you are more susceptible to attracting a bacteria, a fungus, or a virus from a partner just because it's an energetic thing. You haven't healed those wounds. But also in your semen, in your semen, you have that same vibration. You have that same frequency. You have depression. You have resentment. You have control. You have narcissistic traits in your semen. And you want to ejaculate that into a woman's vagina. And she's left to transmute it. Because of the mentality that, oh, if I take care of my testicles, I'm gay. <laughs> When all you have to do sometimes is just go rock the pot. Go rock the pot and release when your little girlfriend hurt your feelings when you was 14 years old. Or when your mama didn't build your confidence. Or when your father was beating on your mother. Or when your great granddaddy was beating on your great grandmother. Or when your great, 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 great somebody was getting beat by slave master. All of that is in your testicles. But it's okay for the woman to come in like the herbal nurse and doctor you up and, and, and it's okay to be sexual and rub on your anus, but it's not okay for you to do that for yourself. Men, understand if you just took a little bit of coconut oil, when you have a headache and just massage that anal region to release, to get off of chemical medication. So here's the science. It's about getting off of chemical things and doing it in a natural way to transmute, to go to a higher frequency. A lot of y'all dudes, ooh, this is, I'm like somebody, <laughs> this grandma fussing today. A lot of y'all dudes are so angry and have so many narcissistic traits because you just won't release. Because a woman didn't hurt you somewhere in your life. And you spent the rest of your life trying to control not being hurt again. That's not a God. That's not divine masculine. That's just a plain, that's just a man. That's a boy, honestly. There are special herbs and remedies specifically for men to help with this. And so, I mean, it seems like it's just a, it's just a, a great dysfunction, number one, on our sexuality. And that's what part of the agenda about this year is about perverting the human sexuality that's the last thing that we have left like everything goes like these energies have perverse our sexuality is 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 next and it should be sacred and being sacred doesn't mean that it can't be fun being sacred doesn't mean that it has to be monogamous but it should be sacred And sacred sexuality starts with yourself. It starts with getting all of the viruses, all of the bacteria, all of the funguses out of your body before even engaging with someone. It's about checking that nasty ass personality that you have. 
the control, the narcissism, the stalking, the abuse, verbal, mental, emotional. Right? I ain't sipped none of my tea since I've been. A symptom, ascension symptoms. <sighs> the only way we're going to kind of get through this is if we do it together and hold each other accountable. That's the only way as a human race that we're gonna get through this if we hold each other accountable. Ladies, stop dating men who don't have a healthcare regimen that's beyond the gym. Men, stop dating women who don't take care of their yoni. Like, stop doing it. That's like one of my first questions. Like, what, what do you do? What, what do you do? I want to know what you do. And here's the thing. A person can lie and say whatever. But over time, if you move slow, that person, who that person really is, is going to reveal itself. So either that person is going to lie themselves into transformation. They're going to lie themselves there. If they want to keep dating you, are they actually going to be who they say they are? That's my spiel. Happy Friday, people.